the News Channel 5 Network. This is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a Thursday. And I appreciate you all being here on an important topic, one we've been talking about all the month of November, and we continue it today, as, as we all know, the importance of dealing with juvenile crime in Middle Tennessee. It's a national problem, too, though. I mean, and it's, it's something that, of course, our News Channel 5 I team has been working on. We've run a series of stories under Broken. Many of you have followed it. We've had Phil Williams, Ben Hall, Jennifer Krause, all involved in this on this show. And we're going to talk more today, not so much about the problem, which they'll continue to cover, and we'll have more throughout the end of the month, but how we deal with the problem and what kind of programs are out there to work with troubled youth to maybe keep them from getting into trouble or if they're already there try to get them back on track and so we're going to talk about it with one organization this morning that happens actually to focus on girls and, and let's just say this at the outset that the vast majority of this juvenile crime is just the fact guys it's kids boys are causing the problems but there are girls as well that not only are involved in some crime but also runaways and other very important issues and let's face it we want to deal with the problems for all of our youth so this morning uh, with us from epic girl is the executive director all right and that's uh, stacia freeman good morning to you good stacia morning to you. nice to have you on you've also brought with you andrea hancock who is uh, i guess outreach coordinator for yes. epic girl yeah. in case people aren't familiar with epic girl would you give them a little primer on it? Yeah, basically we're a prevention program. We want to prevent all the bad things from happening. Hmm. And so we work with the court systems to educate kids on how to build strength um, through relationships and other opportunities to keep them from getting stuck in those cycles that drive crime. And and but when you say prevention, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, but you're dealing with some that have already gotten in trouble, right? Right. Yeah, we do. And, you know, we, we look at kids and we kind of identify their risk level. And based on their risk level, you know, some of the kids are what we would call level three. That means they've already picked up a charge, some, something maybe serious. Mm -hmm. And, but they still have all the underlying issues that got them to that point. And and we do know that the brain is pliable and through relationship you can turn them around yeah and so yes we do work with with kids at a lot of different stages coming Dip into our system what's the age range and again it's it's females but mm -hmm. the age what, as young as what we started out working as young as 12 okay and uh, we've recently changed our focus to start at 14 14 up to 18, 18 years but old. once they come into Epic Girl, it's really our basis is community, so they they stay with us okay, you stay for in touch resources. With them. Mm -hmm. yes. That's wonderful, and you get into touch with them from referrals from law enforcement, from juvenile court. Who do you work with? Well, all of those. Okay. Um, most of our referrals, about ninety percent of them, come from the juvenile court in Davidson County. Right. We're also in Williamson County and mm -hmm. Robertson County. Um, and then we get a fair amount of referrals from the Department of Children's Services. Ah, we work with any sense. girl, usually that's in juvenile justice, so we will work a lot with that division of the mm -hmm. Department of Children's Services. And then we get referrals from other agencies. Sometimes we get referrals from girls that have completed the program that want their younger sisters to come or their cousins, aunties, mamas. I mean, people will refer to us a lot of variety of Yeah, they can come ways. from anywhere, I mm -hmm. suppose. And all socioeconomic backgrounds, all ethnicities. And again, the focus is on girls. Why do you think it is that we see um, so much more of the crime being committed by boys? Is it well, testosterone? Is that the simple answer? Of course, a lot of them are young where the testosterone really hasn't kicked in yet. But I mean, I the vast majority of it, I'm sorry. Right. I just see it every day. It's, it's little boys or boys are doing this. I don't see a lot of girls getting busted for this. Right. Well, you know, I think I originally started focusing on girls because I feel like nonprofits have to identify their lane and stay there. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that was really... I'm not saying there's not a need our, there. Our, I'm not saying yeah, there's not a yeah. need, but But, yeah. you know, going into this and being in this space for four years, I really feel like, like if you look at um, Mr. Williams' series where he talked mm -hmm. to the kids, a lot of them in detention, yep. and the one boy whom I know who said... Um, I think it would have changed my life mm. to have had a father. I remember and, that quite yes. vividly from that piece. And I know that kid, and when I walk into the detention center, he's always like, hey, Miss Epic Girl, hey, Miss Epic Girl. And I just think that a lot of our boys are very lost, mm. and they don't have um, male role models in their communities a lot of times, um, leading them and teaching them what it means to be mm -hmm. a man. And so a lot of kids get stuck in survival mode, and they repeat the cycles sometimes that they've seen. Yeah, we see it time and again. Andrea, you know, you deal with some of these girls. They are they tough? Yes. Um, I mean, what so are they like? <laughs> I mean, what are you? 
Some of them, um, I believe, is just basically um, it's a wall that they put up. It's okay. a protective mm -hmm. mechanism that they use to um, protect them from hurt, hurt that they have experienced in the past. But once they know that you care, yeah. once that they, they know that you're, it's like a non-judgmental mm -hmm. zone that we have there at Epic Girl. Once they know that you care for them, you genuinely care for them, that wall usually comes down. It does, because I mean, you gotta get their trust. And I'll tell you, yes. I see some of these kids in juvenile court, and it looks like they're dead behind their eyes. Yes. And it breaks my heart when I see it, because they're 14 and they look dead. They look like the look I've seen in some adult convicts mm -hmm. who have murdered people that just, they've checked out. Mm -hmm. And so I, mean, I, you know, I just worry sometimes, can they be reached? Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and we believe, uh, we, what we see and we also believe that connection is key. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of those girls, I would like to believe that it's because of lack of connection. They have not been able to actually connect. With their parents, friends, with, with yes, who? parents. I mean, from early ages, not being able to connect. The stories we hear um, is heartbreaking mm -hmm. um, about the, the breakdown of the family at early ages. Like what? Give me an example um, of something just, bad. Well, well, hard. I would say hard. Okay. Um, it, just maybe a, a, a young female who did not get the nurturing and care and love that she deserved and needed from a mother. Maybe just the basic stuff. The basics, like hugs, yes. hugs, um, yes. support. Attention. attention. Uh, maybe the mother uh, chose to give more attention to uh, a mm -hmm. boyfriend mm -hmm. than her or chose the boyfriend over her. Maybe the child um, had it experiences maybe with sexual uh, inappropriate mm -hmm. contact with the, the male. Maybe he had sexual advances towards her and she tried to express that to the mother and the mother may have told her, hey, he's the one taking care of us, he's the one who's paying the bills, so you're gonna have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Or what did you do was the first response. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've seen you wear short pants or something like mm -hmm. that. So it was basically the child was accused of something at mm -hmm. nine or 10 years old of being provocative or something. Yeah. So just that breakdown and that child, she's supposed to be able to trust the mom to go to tell her those things and the mom to protect her. But ultimately the mom chose the relationship with the boyfriend. Yeah, I just I hate that. And you see that time again, What what on earth? So again, Plenty of blame to go around for the loser parents. All right, as far as these girls, when they go through the situation that they've dealt with, mm -hmm. then they act out, is that getting involved in crime? What, running away, what are the different symptoms that come out of that? A lot of times we see running away first. Um, so when we go into the detention center and we provide screens, we get to show up in that space and say, we're not lawyers, we're not counselors, we're not you know, here to get you in trouble, but we know when you're running away from home, a lot of times it's because there's things going on right. and in your life and we want to help you figure that out so you don't get stuck in our system. So we see about 187, wow. 100, 150, 180, Bob, uh, runaways a year, including runaways that are coming from other states running to our city. Oh, really? So mm -hmm. how, are, they, are they then just picked up by law enforcement? Now, now as runaways, they, they haven't necessarily committed a crime here, but they're youngsters on their own, and obviously truancy would kick in, I guess. Right. So, um, especially coming in from out of state, maybe just, what, hopping a bus or hitchhiking here or something like well, that? Well, number, I mean, the reason that I really founded Epic Girl is because I worked with anti-trafficking for 10 years. Okay. And so I thought mm. a lot of the these kinds of things are occurring because kids don't know how to stay safe and so if we can educate them on how to stay safe how it really occurs then we've prepared them for those mm -hmm. situations so that they're they're more prepared for how to address them um, and so that's the real reason that we reach out to runaways is because that's such a high risk for them but the kids that run away from other states a lot of times have connected to someone online and so there's that safety concern of connecting to older people online and you know as Andrea said you, you do look at family stability is, is obviously a root cause of, of what's driving some of this, but by no means do we think that it is the, the fault of the parents. I mean... Well, how is it not when she just described that situation to me? That makes me mad. I'm tired yeah. of hearing about parents picking their loser boyfriend over their child. There's well, a problem with that. I blame the parent for right. that. Well, okay? I, I do understand why you're saying that, but I also think that 
it's a cycle. The trauma cycles are well, repeated. The parent may have and gone through that exactly. same stuff herself. And yes. I think that's one of the pushes in Tennessee to, to talk about adverse childhood experiences and generational trauma and how it's transferred from generation to generation. All right, so how do you fix that then when you have a cycle of that? And maybe drugs are involved mm -hmm. as well. Incarceration. Incarceration, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, then how, I just don't know when you describe some of the, that mm -hmm. situation right. with that maybe a girl in that kind of living arrangement. I, I just don't see all of a sudden you sitting down changing that parent's way of life. Well, what we, uh, Epic Girl, we had incorporated a family component where we work with the mom as well because we did see that a lot of moms was just where they were repeating some things that they had experienced. And it was it was kind of like it was hard for us to work with the child. And she had become empowered. She had became strong. She had started operating what we from what we call her strength zone. Mm -hmm. She was no longer looking at all the bad things that had happened to her, but she was looking at the things that was good about her, her strengths. She was smart. She was mm -hmm. athletic. You know, it was a possibility. We was inspiring hope within yeah. a young child. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at the things that had happened to her that ultimately she couldn't control right. being a young child. So she would go home and she would start implementing the things that are what we would try to teach her how to deal with conflict. Um, the, the things about healthy relationships. She would go home and she would implement those things, but again, the mom was still operating her weak zone. And the child would come back and kind of talk to us about, you know, how do we deal with when mom. Mm -hmm. And the child was being able to be sympathetic with the mom, you mm -hmm. know, like, so I'm sure mom they, they got a lot the, going they on. They love their mom. And uh, one component that I have to make sure I do take into account is the financial reliance, perhaps, on someone else. If the mm -hmm. mom could find a way to support yes. herself, mm -hmm. maybe she wouldn't be so dependent on this outside influence of a boyfriend or someone who's just not healthy. And that's what we learned when we yeah. started having the family meetings. The moms was they were willing. Mm -hmm. They were um, broken. Oh my gosh, the, fam the the moms were broken because they didn't know a way out. A lot of them didn't have like education. They were working like minimum wage jobs. They had, you know, um, you know, a couple of children. You know, and um, they they were looking for a way out, but just didn't know how to get out. And so we were trying to connect them to resources to help them to better themselves. And we had a lot of parents that once they had that support, they were willing to make healthy decisions as far as with relationships so, and about themselves. And so deep down, these mothers, and we're talking about mothers, I guess fathers could be in the mix as well. Mm -hmm. um, but 90% of our girls come from single from, family homes. Okay, mm -hmm. then th they know they want to do better. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they can't. So it's not as though they're just making this choice just because they prefer this boyfriend to their kid. Mm -hmm. They want to do better, but they don't know how to do it any other other way. That's okay. Unfortunately, that is a lot All right. of them. We'll take a break on that and when we come back, we'll talk about how then you do help them when they get into it. And it, clearly then it's the family and the child, I mean, in one together that you're treating as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. Mm -hmm.